This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we're going to be showing you how to make a bench cushion. This cushion is in an entryway and we've made it for this bench. It spruces up the room and adds a little bit of style. We're going to build it from fabrics and supplies that you can purchase from Sailrite. Angela from the Sailrite Loft is going to show us how to build it. Let's get started and show you how to build your very own bench cushion. First step, to take measurements of the bench, write those measurements down. We'll be cutting our foam to the exact measurement of this bench top. It will be compressed slightly when the cover is installed. We're transferring those measurements to the foam. Then we'll use a straight edge and strike a line where we want to cut. For your information, this is a 2 inch antimicrobial polyurethane foam that's available from Sailrite. Now Brian's going to place weights on top of the foam and then line up that line that he struck down with the edge of the table. We're going to be using the edge of the table to help keep this electric kitchen knife straight. This is nothing more than an electric kitchen knife. It's easy to cut this foam with a standard electric kitchen knife that you use possibly for Thanksgiving. As Brian uses the edge of the table to help guide the knife, he's ensuring that the knife is being held as vertical as possible so that the edge of the foam is nice and straight. And the results? A beautifully cut piece of foam. We cut this foam the exact size of the bench top, but when the cover is installed it will compress it down by approximately an inch. If you want your cushion to fit the entire surface area, you may want to add a half inch around the entire perimeter of your foam. The front edge of this bolt of fabric is not straight. Angela is striking a line and she'll cut it so that it's perfectly straight. We're using scissors instead of a hot knife to cut this fabric because it contains a 35% cotton content. It'll smell pretty strong if you cut it with a hot knife. To make our bench cushion, we'll need a top plate and a bottom plate, two separate pieces of fabric that will be sewn together. To determine the size to cut our fabric, we need to take the foam size plus the thickness of the foam. So our foam measures 59 inches by 17 inches. We need to add 2 inches to that because we're using a 2 inch foam. Our calculations require us to cut our two fabric plates to 61 inches by 19 inches. Angela's trimming off the selvage edge of the fabric with scissors and now she's measuring the fabric to the correct size for the two plates that she must create. And then she strikes line with a number two pencil and cuts it with scissors. If you use a fully synthetic fabric, we recommend cutting it with a hot knife to seal the edges so they do not unravel. Because this fabric has a cotton content, if cut with a hot knife, it would stink rather bad. Our two plates have been cut to size. Now we're going to concentrate on making a template to design the corner so they're all the same. We're using this cardboard and measuring 3 and 5 eighths inches and striking a diagonal line. Then we strike a line a half inch up from that diagonal line and, and then mark on the cardboard that location as well. Now we'll take a rounded object like this cone of thread and create a gradual curve. The idea is to create a template so that all corners are the same. Size is not necessarily that important. Uh, but uh, this makes a fairly nice corner for any type of cushion. So now we're just using a cone of thread. You could use a cup as well to create the curve. The cut line is the top line and the sew line is the bottom line. Now we'll cut out this template. Now that we have a template, all of our corners will be the same size and shape. On both the top plate and the bottom plate, we'll mark each one of the corners with this template. So that's eight corners for our cushion. After they're all marked, we'll cut them out with scissors directly on top of that line we struck down on the fabric. Now our two plates have been cut out and the corners trimmed. We're ready to base these plates together. 
This fabric does have a pattern, so we're going to try to match it up so that it's going the same direction. Though one side is the top and one side's the bottom, so it probably doesn't matter much. Be sure the outside surfaces are facing each other. That's extremely important. Since we've chosen to use this umbrella decorative piping, we're going to baste these panels together with this umbrella decorative piping in between them. You can choose not to use a piping if you prefer, but we believe a piping spruces up the cushion and makes it look best. We'll be applying this basting tape or double-sided tape for canvas all around the perimeter of both the bottom plate and the top plate. At the corners, because they're rounded, there'll be a few bubbles in the basting tape. That's no big deal. So we've applied it to the bottom plate. Now we need to create an opening that will allow the foam to be inserted because we're going to sew all around the perimeter, leaving an end of this cushion open so that we can insert the foam in a later step. So Angela's trimming the basting tape so that when she unpeels the uh, paper, uh, it will not peel off that end because that's the end that we've chosen to insert the foam. This umbrella decorative piping trim needs to be cut with a hot knife to prevent the ends from unraveling. If you don't have a professional hot knife like the Sailrite Edge hot knife, you could use a wood burning tool or a soldering gun. Now Angela is peeling the transfer paper off the double sided tape revealing the glue. Notice she didn't peel it up at the end that was cut because that's where the foam will be inserted. Now she carefully bastes the uh, umbrella decorative piping all around the perimeter of this, the bottom plate. Take your time and make sure the piping is nice and straight and the corners look good because what you baste now will be the end results when you're done sewing. Once you have the uh, piping basted to this, the top plate or the bottom plate because it really doesn't matter, we'll take the opposite plate, peel off the transfer paper on that basting tape and baste it atop these two so the outside surfaces are facing each other. The portion of the uh, cushion that will be left open to insert the foam we will not baste together yet. You can see there's some slight unraveling of the fabric along the edges that were cut with a uh, pair of scissors. Because this fabric has a cotton content, we didn't use a hot knife. However, if you use a polyester or a nylon or an acrylic fabric like Sombrella, you can use a hot knife and that'll prevent the unraveling. It's really no big deal because that will be the inside of the cushion and won't be visible. But preventing the unraveling will make it easier to construct the cushion. If you choose to use a synthetic fabric, use the hot knife. It'll make your job easier. This is the portion of the cushion that will be left unsewn so we can insert the foam. Notice the piping stops in the center. We designed it that way. And we're going to cut the other side of the decorative piping so that there's enough overlap. Angela probably cuts too much, but we'd rather have too much than too little. Those piping pieces have not been basted to the plates. We'll do that in a later step. Next up, we're going to sew the plates and the piping together. Because we're using piping, we're going to have to replace the standard foot with a roping zipper foot right for the Sayerite 111 sewing machine. This roping zipper foot will allow us to sew right up against our hard object, which is the piping. So the stitch is almost directly on top of the piping. We're using the Sayerite 111 sewing machine with the MCSCR power system. Great sewing machine, however a home sewing machine will work just as well. This is a rather squishy fabric and because we're using a walking foot sewing machine, it feeds beautifully. Notice how Angela spent her time going around the corner there and is as sewing as close as possible to the piping. Take your time, especially at the corners. Since the panels have been basted together, we don't have to worry about them shifting on us. Notice that when Angela makes sharp turns to the fabric that she buries her needle to keep from losing the spot where she stopped sewing. Here we are coming to the opposite end, the end that will be left unsewn so we can insert the foam and notice what she does here. She sews around the corner but stops approximately one to two inches around the corner and does some reversing. The opening is about five to seven inches in width, enough to insert the foam, especially if we use a silk film. Now turn the cover right side out. 
By utilizing the silk film, we can more easily insert the foam into our cover and also provide a little bit more water or moisture protection so the foam stays drier. This is a silk film that is noiseless and available from Sayerite. We're cutting it so that it's at least 6 to 12 inches larger than the foam. This silk film is a center folded material so that it's, when it's unfolded it's 54 inches wide. So Angela is placing it so that it will wrap around the foam with enough to wrap over by approximately 12 inches all around the sides. Once we have an overlap of 12 inches everywhere, we'll take a vacuum and insert it inside the silk film so that it comes in contact with the actual foam. Then we'll turn on the vacuum and notice how the foam will compress to a very small size, almost 50% or 70% of its size. Here we'll insert the uh, vacuum hose in between the silk film on top of the foam. Turn it on and watch what happens. As the foam shrinks, Angela will help it shrink faster by compressing the foam with her hands. That'll shrink it up even more. This will make it very easy to insert the foam inside of our cushion cover. The opening in our cushion is only about 7 inches wide. It would be very difficult to stuff this foam if this silk film were not used. Once she's happy with the compression of the foam, she'll turn off the vacuum. You still have plenty of time before the foam expands, but do work quickly. Having a second helper is always a good idea. You do not want the foam to expand until you have it inserted in the cover. Here the cameraman, myself, is helping. All right, perfect, it's inside. Now it can expand slowly. Or if you want, you could reach your hand inside and let some of the air out. We don't recommend poking it, especially if it's gonna be used in an outdoor application because this silk film is also a moisture barrier. Notice the foam is expanding, but very slowly. And just gonna let some of the air out so that it expands more quickly. As the foam expands, make sure that you're happy with the placement of the cover. You can make adjustments easily before it expands all the way now. We're making sure the piping is centered between the thickness of the foam. Only one more thing to do, and that's sew the opened end shut. We're going to peel off the transfer paper of the basting tape that has not yet been revealed, and we're going to baste this open end shut. It's not a bad idea to do this while the foam is still compressed slightly if you use the silk film because then it'll give you more fabric to work with. As you wait, the more it will expand. Now Angela's trimmed off the excess decorative piping so that it'll overlay each other in the center of this end. And notice how she folds the fabric back so that it looks pleasing to the eye and then base the decorative piping in place to this plate. And she'll do the same thing to the bottom plate. As you baste this in shut, take your time and make sure the fold is as close to the piping as possible. We'll be taking this 7 inch opening approximately back to the sewing machine and sewing right next to the piping and also closing up the fabric at the same time. Notice how she's folding the decorative piping ends so that they crisscross each other. You can do it a number of ways. This is the way we've chosen to do it. You could have the piping butt up to each other, but we think that it looks best if it actually crisscrosses each other. So Angela's going to work a little bit more there to make it more pleasing to the eye. Just going to tuck it in. Notice the foam is not expanded all the way yet. That's the beauty of working with it right away and closing up that end. 
So you may not want to let all the air out of the silk film if you've used that until you're done sewing up the end. It'll make it easier. With a little bit of patience, here's the end result. It is beautiful. Now all we have to do is take it to the sewing machine. We'll start sewing where we left off sewing and reverse a little bit there. We've also placed the opposite roping zipper foot in. This is a roping zipper foot left for the Serite 111 sewing machine. Obviously you want to use the appropriate roping zipper foot for your sewing machine. And now we're sewing very close to that piping. And we're also catching the fabric. Here at the bump, it's a little bit hard to go over the bump. In fact, the back portion of the foot gets stuck on it, so Angela has to raise the foot so that she can continue to sew. See how it gets stuck? She'll raise the foot slightly. Oops. Come on, Angela, raise that foot. And we'll, we'll help walk it over that bump. It's a pretty big bump because this uh, piping is rather large. And we'll sew all the way to the portion where we started sewing when we sewed the plates together and do some reversing there as well. And then we're done. That's all there is to it. The foam is not yet expanded all the way to the ends, so Ansha is going to work the cushion and the foam to fill the ends of the uh, cushion. The 59 inches has not yet been achieved. By doing this, the uh, ends will be filled. Sayorite stocks hundreds, if not thousands, of fabrics that are great for bench cushions. These are some of the popular brands that Sayorite stocks. You can browse the Sayorite website and pick your favorite fabric today. Here's the materials list of the items that were used to build this cushion. You may want to pause the video here to study this list. Obviously, you can pick your favorite fabric from Sayorite. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayrite website or subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayrite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.